In this episode, I'm going to be talking to you about sitemaps. So we are actually not going to be using this plugin for that because that plugin only supports blo uh, blog, uh, static pages and your regular pages out of the box. You would have to extend it to support your custom plugins like we have movies on our site. Instead of that, I'm going to show you how I, how I created a sitemap for my site. So for watchlearn.com, as you can see, if you go to sitemap.xml, you get all of these links and then you can take this URL and uh, add it to your web console. I think it's called, uh, uh, it used to be called Webmaster Tools. So Google Webmaster Tools. So we are going to learn how to create a sitemap and of course we are going to learn some helpful tips along the way. Now before we begin a little disclaimer, I am in no way shape or form a sitemap expert and this solution may not be the optimal solution for you. Uh, it works for me, Google doesn't have any problems with it and it's okay, at least for me. Now. If your sitemap is very important to you, maybe uh, go on Google, search for sitemaps, see what the sitemaps do, what attributes you can use and so on, and then decide if you wanna use this method or you maybe wanna use some kind of a plugin and extend it to support your custom plugins. Okay, now that the disclaimer is out of the way, let's create a sitemap. So I'm actually going to go to my plugins, watch, learn, uh, movies, routes. You can create a plugin for your sitemap if you want, but I'm just going to go to the movies and do it in the routes folder. So I'm going to create a new route and it's going to be called sitemap.xml. So we create this enclosure, this anon anonymous function, and now we are just going to uh, let's say uh, send to our sitemap uh, two, uh, two of our content types or of our models. So one is going to be movies and the other is going to be uh, genres. So we are going to be calling all of the movies and I can use uh, this notation right here because I have use watch learn movies models movie actor and genre right here. If you don't have it, you can put it at the beginning of your file or you can just copy uh, this and put it right here. So, but I'm going to just leave it as a movie and then we are going to also be sending genres. So we put all of the movies inside this movie variable and all of the genres inside the genres variable. Now, when someone hits this route, so when someone goes to octobermovies.dev slash sitemap XML, we want to return something to him. Now, of course, we already learned that you can return something like this for the API. So the movies, uh, you can return actually whatever you want. In our case, we are going to be returning a view. So a view is just, let's call it a template file that is going to display some data on our site. And that template file can be a normal HTML page or it can be actually an XML content type. So to do that, we will return a response of view. And now we have to tell October uh, where is that view situated? Where, where does it exist? So it, since we are in the uh, watch learn namespace in the movies plugin, uh, we are going to put that view somewhere ri right here. So to tell October that you would just do watch learn movies. So this is the plugin name and then the name of the view. The name of the view is going to be sitemap. Okay. So we are going to create that view right here. So I'm just going to add a new folder and the folder name is going to be views. Right, so we have this views right here and now I'm going to create a new file in that folder which is going to be called sitemap.htm, not XML, but .htm. So because October works with uh, HTM files for its views. 
but that doesn't matter we are going to say to October that this is actually an XML file not HTM file now the next thing we need to do we need to send somehow these variables to that view and to do that you would just open up an array and that's it so you send uh, this array of your variables so movies and genres so now our uh, view sitemap.htm view will have access to those variables and then we can iterate over them and display the title the date and whatever we need okay now we want to send headers so not actually send headers but we want to tell october okay so this is going to be an xml file it's going to be an xml response not a usual html response so we are going to send header so header of content type text xml and that's it now only thing we need to do now is uh, define uh, that XML file, site, sitemap XML file in our sitemap uh, view. I'm just going to paste in this uh, sitemap head or whatever you want to call it. So this is the standard sitemap head and we're going to close it down here. So URL set. And now since we have access to our movie variable, uh, we can just do a for so this is standard uh, twig twig templating language uh, for loop so we are going to iterate through all of the movies and now we are going to create a new URL and we are going to set a location for that URL okay so the location is going to be URL so what we are saying October to October right here uh, in this lock and the lock tags uh, add a URL to the movie so every movie starts with movies movie and then we have a slug of the movie which we are getting from this movie variable so movie.slug so if I save this and go to October movies.dev, we get this. So as you can see, we have URL lock and then we have uh, the full URL to our movies. Great. Uh, the next thing we need to do is uh, create last modification date. So last mod. So it's going to be movie and then created that. So uh, the date that the movie was created. And then we pass in this date filter, which is going to be C. And C means that it's going to be uh, ESO 800, 8, uh, 8801, I think, or something like that formatted date. You will see it when we save it. So if I go right here and refresh the page, now you can see that the last modification was in 1987. We got these weird dates because uh, we used in one of the previous episodes the Faker plugin. So it set the last modification date for this to be 1987, this is 2000 and so on. And then you can set your change frequency to be, I don't know, always. As I said, I'm not a sitemap expert, so you may want to change these attributes as they fit your site. And you can also set the priority to be 0.5. And you get your sitemap and you can send that sitemap to Google. Of course, you would do the same thing for genres, uh, for pages, uh, for whatever you have on your site, you can make it that way. And I think in this way, maybe uh, this particular example is not optimized for you, uh, but uh, you have a lot, of, a lot more control uh, with this type of approach than using some plugin, which maybe don't have all the options that you would need for your sitemap. 
Okay, so this has been it for this video and actually uh, for this series uh, because I'm stopping the series right here and in the next series we are going to be using October as a backend for our front-end application which is going to be written in Vue.js and we are going to be creating a to-do app uh, with Vue.js and October and after that I will probably continue this series. Uh, remember everything we did here will be available for you on github the link will be in the description below uh, if you want to contact me and ask me questions you can do that on twitter facebook youtube my my uh, website and so on if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you like the content i put out maybe consider subscribing to my channel also if you want to send some money my way you can use the patreon page for that so thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next episode.